Welcome everyone to the Believe in Bengal podcast right here at Valley Sports Ohio. Yours truly, Solomon Wilcott, right now. We have a very special guest joining us, Cincinnati Bengals safety, Jordan Battle, joining us on the show. Jordan, first of all, good to see you, my man. Hey, congratulations on the Monday night win. Um, I had to scratch myself when I heard that it was the Cincinnati Bengals' first win on Monday night on the road since 1990, since this old man last suited up. So oh, congratulations, I man. <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, no, that's a, it's a good thing. But, hey, listen, it was one of those games. Just kind of take me into the mindset of that game on Monday night. So many heads had been hanging, the loss of Joe Burrow for the season. But you guys seemed to go in to uh, take on this Jacksonville Jaguar team that had won seven of their last eight games. And you guys were intent on uh, on really competing and playing hard. What was the mindset going into that game? Yeah, uh, coming into the week, uh, it started off on, on Monday. Uh, we had a great walkthrough. Came in on Wednesday, had a great practice. On Thursday, had a great practice. So it started it started in the practices and in the meeting room. Uh, guys just talking. Guys getting the, the extra info we needed on uh, the quarterback, getting the extra info we needed on the receivers. You know, anything we can, we can get, that, anything to help us get the advantage uh, on this team. Uh, we knew they were explosive on offense. Uh, we knew they had a great quarterback, great receivers, uh, an explosive running back. Uh, so we know we, we knew we had to, uh, you know, dial in going into the week and, and come come to play. And I feel like we did that in this game. Well, we need to let um, Cincinnati Bengals fans know what's happening on the field because over the last three games, man, they inserted you into the lineup and the defense has been all the better for it. You got, what, nearly 30 tackles over the last three games, that's almost like 10 tackles per game, man. You're all over the place. And you bring a great physicality. Help me to understand what has um, lent itself to your transition from the college game to the pro game. What's what's made the biggest difference? Yeah, uh, I feel like uh, my tackling uh, has been it's been much better than it, than it was uh, in the past. I feel like that was a, that was a focus coming into the into the leagues, uh, just work on my angles. Uh, work on wrapping and rolling uh, when I got a guy in front of me. So um, that was the, that was the, that was what was that was what was preached to me coming out of the uh, coming out of college. Take better angles, you know. Come down, come full speed. Don't break down too early when you're approaching when you're approaching the runner. Have near have your near foot to his near shoulder and uh, wrap and roll. Make the tackle. Get the guy on the ground. Uh, no matter where it is, uh, get the defense another chance. And uh, that's what I've been trying to do. Uh, just try to play fast. And when I when the play comes to me, just make that play. Hey man, that, you're doing some coaching, man. That's like that's top level stuff. You just was kicking to me right there. I appreciate <laughs> it. And we should let everyone know, man. Hey, during your career at Alabama, you logged over 250 tackles. So that's something that um, I've always felt that you you were a great tackler, not a good tackler, a great tackler, and that would translate at this level. And clearly, it has. I want to know what took place in the second half of that Monday night game. Against a really good Jacksonville Jaguar offense, they're loaded with talent. You know, mm -hmm. guys like Travis Etienne, uh, Christian Kirk, and obviously Calvin Ridley, who we have a lot of respect for. But you guys held them to only two scores on their seven possessions in the second half and in overtime. Uh, yeah. I thought it was phenomenal in terms of the way you guys adjusted down the stretch. What kind of took place? Why were you guys able to play much better as the game went along? Yeah, uh, we realized we needed to to, to get the offense in, in good field position, and that was the thing we had to do is get off the field on third down. Uh, that's something we didn't do very well in the last game. So coming into this game, we knew we had to get off the field on third down and uh, just win the win the turnover battle. Uh, we didn't. I don't think we had any turnovers, uh, but we but we did do a good job of getting off the field on third down. I think that helped us a lot in the game and it helped put the offense in, in better situations on, on offense. Well, look, uh, it seems like for most players coming into this league, there's a steep learning curve. And I, I do believe that any player, I don't care how good you are, I don't care if you're the first player taken in the draft to the last, when you come from college to pro, there's going to be some things to learn. Mm -hmm. It clearly is, and uh, no matter how good you are. Uh, you talked about the tackling. What have maybe been some of those other things that you feel like, wow, man, this is an area where I've grown, where I've improved just during your rookie campaign? 
Yeah, uh, just just knowing route concepts uh, from from other teams. I know they're trying to attack, and uh, just knowing why we're why we're calling a call that we're calling on defense, and uh, why we're calling it, which means if we're calling this call, then we're hoping that we're print, we're thinking they're going to pass. We calling this call, thinking they're going to run. So uh, just just Coach Lou doing a good job of putting us in in the right defense uh, for the right situations. Uh, something something I learned so. So now when I get a call, I'm like, okay, I should be expecting this, but I can react to the, I can react to to something else if that's what they give us. Uh, so I think that's been something I, I've been doing a good job of, of doing on the next level. And um, just playing playing a deep part of the field is, is something I, I've been continuing to work on as well, and uh, I've been trying to do that. Well, over the last few weeks, you've been inserted into the starting lineup. Uh, you along with Dax Hill, you guys are filling some big shoes. Everybody, I'm sure you've heard about Vaughn Bell. You heard about Jesse Bates and what mm -hmm. they meant to this franchise. Um, and they were so very productive. And now you guys, I think, teamed together over the last couple of weeks have played very well. Um, I want you to help our our fans and our listeners to understand. It takes great communication. I, I look yeah. at the safeties as almost like the quarterbacks for the defense. You still mm -hmm. have... Um, you know, a guy like Mike Hilton, who I think is exceptional. What has that communication been like, say, between you and Dax and working with Mike, who's coming down in the box, disguising a lot of things? Take us inside to what the communication is like. Yeah, uh, the communication has been great. Uh, it's been getting better and better as, as the weeks go by. Uh, obviously, we know we all have to be on the same page. We have to have all five DBs or six DBs on the field or four DBs on the field uh, on the same page in order to play good football. And uh, something we've been doing a good job of in the, in the meeting room, in the DB meeting room, uh, and, and even in our group messaging, you know, just trying to, you know, break down film together. Uh, everybody, you know, sending sending clips from a, from a team that we see or from a quarterback that we see uh, from a route, from a route uh, perspective, from, a, from another issue, from another team. Um, just doing a good job breaking down film together. And uh, getting out on the field and, you know, being able to translate it, it has been a, a good progress for us. Now, look, I don't really give a lot of tips when we get here uh, on the Believe in Bingo podcast, but I can tell you, being that, you know, you're from this great university, University of Alabama, first of all, congratulations on making it into the Final Four. You guys were great in the uh, SEC championship game. Yeah. But you know, you've got a lot of alumni. you got guys who come from this great institution, play for this great program all across this league. Mm -hmm. Use that network when you're playing against a quarterback that you know one of your boys just played against the same quarterback. I, yeah. it's, it's okay to pick up that phone and say, what did you see? Here's what mm -hmm. I saw. That, that information, man, I'm telling you, it's huge. It pays huge yeah. dividends. But that's the network that you have, so it's always good to use it. Let's turn the page a little bit. This week, you guys are going to be taking on the seven and five Indianapolis Colts. Um, it's a battle for the for the playoffs, and right now they're in a very good position. You guys are our ascending team. What's the primary concern as you get ready for this game on Sunday against the Colts? Yeah, uh, just be one to know. Uh, you come into the week, have a practice, have practices like we did last week. Yeah. You know, come come into practice. You know, get play with speed. You know, so you get it out early and you're ready to play with speed in the game. Um, you know, shut down, shut down the run game, uh, play, play, play pass game very well in, in the back end as DBs, you know, eliminate the big plays, uh, downfield. You know, if you have to fit on third down, uh, we know our pass rush is going to get there. Uh, we just know we got to lock up in the back end and, you know, get off the field. And, uh, another thing is just, you know, listening, listening to what our coaches are telling us and, and believing in it. Uh, believing in what our what our players are telling us, believing in what our what our leaders are telling us, you know, and just going to the game confident, you know, and ready to play. And uh, we'll come out on top when we play our right football. Hey Jordan, are you on the punt team at all? The punt team? Yeah, I was. I was. I was PP, but uh, they they just took me off. Yeah, you're a personal protector, which is a great. Yeah. That's an important Tough. job. Got to be yeah. smart to play that job too, man. I'm yeah. learning something. They might put you back in there because you know. Last week, the Colts blocked two punts, man, two in one game, which is rarely seen uh, in the world of data analytics. If you yeah. block a punt and return it for a touchdown, you win 80% of your games. If you block two, it's game over. So uh, I know Darren Simmons is on high alert this week, isn't he? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I already know. I already know he's on high alert, for sure. We probably, right. probably going to have a couple early meetings this week. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt. 
Hey, one last question before we get you out of here, talking about this coach team. Uh, I don't know that a lot of people are having conversations as they're sitting around the table talking about Michael Pittman Jr. and Alec Pierce. They're two wide receivers for the coach. But it's not lost on me. They're coming off a game against the Titans. Both guys had over 100 yards receiving in that game. When you look at these two receivers, what are some of the difficult tasks that you guys are facing trying to keep them out of the end zone this week? Yeah, they do a great job of uh, creating space and, and getting them in open space, uh, both of them. Uh, they move both guys. Uh, they, they know how to get them get them the uh, intermediate routes, uh, whether it's, you know, dig routes, whether it's uh, breaking ins, um, whether it's out, quick out routes. Uh, Michael Pittman has been one of their move guys along with, uh, I know, Josh Downs. Yeah. Um, so so we know so we know we got a, a little hard task on our hands uh, coming into this week. Uh, Minshew does a great job getting those guys the balls and, and, and knowing and knowing the offensive scheme and what is what is meant to do and what is meant to uh, break down our defense. So uh, we know we have to do a great job of, uh, of locking up this week because uh, they got good two good guys on the outside and then they got a, a good move guy in Josh Downs. Yeah, Josh Downs incredible having an excellent rookie season. Um, mm -hmm. He's a very good player. I will tell you this. Um, because I've talked to Gartner Minshew several times. The guy's a gunslinger. So if you, you know mm -hmm. what they say about gunslingers, he's gonna complete a lot, but he'll he'll give you a chance to get your hands yeah. on the ball. So get get those hands ready, Jordan. Yeah. You're gonna have a chance to get one this week. Got you. Yeah, I have him ready. Okay, my man. All the best to you. Thank you for taking the time to join us. He's Jordan Battle. I'm Solomon Wilcox. Everyone, thank you for joining us right here on Believe in Bengals podcast on Valley Sports Ohio.